rabbity rabbit here, and I'm coming to you from Hood River, Oregon, in the great northwest of here in the United States. And I'm here today with my guest, um, carousel historian and preservationist, Dwayne Perron, who has probably saved and preserved more American carousels than any other person here in the good old U.S. of A. Hello, Dwayne. Hello. And thank you for inviting me in, and us and my audience here into your gracious home here. You're welcome. Yes, and now uh, you have actually, uh, you've saved a lot of carousels. Okay, how, how, to most people out there who aren't in the know, what, is, what, is, what, what does that mean when you save carousels? Are they endangered? Well, <clears throat> there was 10,000 carousels made in this country, and there are now probably about 100, uh, which means every time you see a wooden carousel, uh, that means 99 have been destroyed, and they were destroyed many ways. One, just by lack of attention, just abuse. Some were thrown away. Some were burned. But most of them were uh, uh, taken apart by collectors. And uh, a fellow would be uh, inherited a carousel from his dad, and he's making $100 a day, and along comes a guy from Sotheby's that says, I can get you a quarter of a million dollars for your carousel. And uh, that doesn't take much brains, so Sotheby's would back a truck up to the uh, carousel. They would take the horses, and they would take them to New York, put them on a stand, and sell them individually. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Sotheby's, Sotheby's the auction house. Yes. Yeah, they're on Park Avenue in Manhattan. Right, yes. and, and everybody was happy except Carol and I, uh, because we didn't like the idea of this wonderful traditional or family-oriented machines being just dissipated into the oblivion. Yeah. So what we do, what we did was, uh, well, we kind of started out by collectors ourselves, and then we became dealers because we could buy more things if we dealt in them because we could take the profit in the form of carousel animals. But then we turned into preservationists, and, you know, we're the worst kind. And... So what we would do is we would hear about this carousel being dismantled and what I would do is I would jump on a plane and I would go back to where the, they had left the mechanism. Because wow, you, 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 as soon as, uh, 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 spur of the moment almost. Well, no, it <laughs> wasn't that quite that. What it was <laughs> is I taught a class in Madison, Wisconsin each year mm -hmm. to a bunch of bankers and it was only a two-week class. And all the banks sent their brightest people to this class. And what I would do is I would start out the first class by saying, here's what I do, and here's what my passion is. And if you hear about a carousel being this happening to a carousel in your community, I want you to call me. So I had this huge network of bankers all over the United States wow. that would call me when this would happen. And so then I knew that that had happened, so I would go, I'd find an owner, I would give him $500 for this mechanism, and in the old days, it, they actually had all of the, 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 the artwork and everything left. They were just after the horses, but they had the mechanism and the artwork, and I would back a 40-foot van up to it. I would go down and hire all of the winos I could find, <laughs> and then we would dismantle that, and I would put it in that truck, and I would bring it up here to this place out on that hayfield and I dump that carousel onto the ground of that hayfield. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we would, then I built this barn that we were in and then we um, uh, got together volunteer groups. We restored a lot of carousels with just volunteers. Then we would take, we would buy animals and restore that mechanism and have a restored carousel and then we'd go out and we would find a shopping center and we'd become a, a leaseor in that shopping center. We would charge a buck to ride and what, after the, all expenses, all the profit would come back and we would then restore another carousel. Uh. And we did that for, I think we did that eight times. We had, at one time we had eight carousels running around the nation. 
And that's the cash flow came from those carousels, and then we put them right back to the, into another carousel and got it out. Now, when you were buying carousel mechanisms, though, you were buying them without the horses, but you would acquire no. the horses from other horses and repopulate the right. mechanism? Right, we repopulated them. As a matter of fact, the big loof carousel in, Santa, in San Diego, mm -hmm. Carol decided to make it a tribute to loof. And mm -hmm. what it has is all the different periods of loof uh, from its early primitive to his, you know, realistic and to his stylized face. So a person can walk up to that carousel and see all the different periods and all the different animals. It has, I think, three giraffes, uh, uh, a teddy bear. Ah. Uh, it has three camels. And what else, Carol? Uh, I don't know, but it has all the different animals and so forth. It's a wonderful, wonderful machine. And so then we would, but what happened was uh, they discovered the kiosk. You know what the kiosk is? The little thing they sell watches and jewelry and stuff off in a shopping center. Ah, well, yeah. a carousel takes as much room as four of those kiosks. Yeah, that's right. The ticket so, goes alone. <laughs> so, uh, as a result, then we got priced out of the market. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't know what to do because we couldn't afford to pay the rent because there was no money left after after we paid the rent. So then we started searching for where carousels ought to be in anyway. anyway. Carousels yeah. belong in parks uh, because they were... Uh, do you know why uh, carousels belong in parks? Well, because people go to parks for relaxation That's and, right, and but recreation. Do you, know, do you know who owned most of the carousels in the turn of the century? Well, a, lo a lot of the amusement parks were owned by streetcar and tra transportation companies, and they owned a lot of carousels. Do you know why? Because that's how a they brought uh, they brought patronage to those amusement parks because the, when the streetcar lines well, were that, at the, uh, on weekends were are underutilized. That's right. Let me give you another little twist to that. Mm -hmm. And the twist is, power companies wanted to sell power. Ah. The way they sold a lot of power is with the trolley line. Mm -hmm. So they built trolley lines, and, but people would ride the trolley lines, but they didn't ride them on the weekends. That's right. So what they did is they say, well, what do we do? And so some bright guy said, let's buy land at the end of the trolley line. And let's put in a park. And therefore, people will ride that on the weekends to go to the park. And we, get, we sell more power. And so they would buy the park, and they put in a carousel. And then they put all these light bulbs on the carousel. Oh. And they said, now look, this is called electricity. It is safe. You should have this in their home. So they use it as a marketing tool as well as generating the, you know, using more of the product that they produce. In fact, a lot of amusement parks back in those days were called, they called themselves electric park. Yes. That's right. And, and so it was a marketing thing. And, and that's, that's why we so clearly surpassed uh, Europe in the quality of carousel carvings. Yes. Because our, all of our carousels at, at this time were permanent locations. So they had a nice roof over them and they, uh, and they could be any size. Now in Europe, which has just very few carousels left, uh, and especially England, because all of their machines were were Travelers. with the fair. Yes. So when they came, to t they would come to town for two weeks and they would move. Okay, by definition, then if you're going to move a carousel every two weeks, you're going to beat it up. It's going to get wet. It's going to get broken and all of that. And and also, it has to be really small because you got to pick it up mm -hmm. and move the darn thing. Well, in America, because of the trolley lines, uh, that didn't happen. That was uh, the, the the machines could get bigger and bigger because right. they didn't have to move them. So what happened was uh, we imported all of the carousel carvers. The the industry was here, yes. and uh, you didn't you didn't you didn't transfer a, 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 you didn't carve a machine in Europe and ship it to America. You shipped the carver to America. They came from Italy and Russia and, and Germany. England, yeah, and the really good ones survived. If you were really a great carver, uh, but a poor businessman, you wouldn't make it. Mm. But if you were a great businessman and a lousy carver, you wouldn't make it. Mm -hmm. But if you were a good carver and a good businessman, you'd make it. And then the other carvers would, you know, you would end up 
hiring other carvers. And all through our history, the, the great carvers and the great businessmen would hire other great carvers. And that kind of reflected in the carvings. And it's really fun to, to look how that in, those influences, how the, the carver who wasn't the boss, and it wasn't called a loof, uh, at one time, aliens worked for Louf, Yes. and so uh, it's very interesting to mm -hmm. see. The, and those are the carver. Those are the name carvers that became that are famous today. Right. Among among historians, and those right. are really yeah, good there's, there's eight or nine really famous carvers, and and they had certain templates that they wanted to follow. So, uh, an educated carousel aficionado can look at a picture and Carol is probably as good as anybody in the nation she can look at a picture and tell you about when this this was carved and about who and who carved it mm -hmm. which is a, a very interesting talent and these car and these cars were clustered in major cities like my, my hometown New York City I mean we, we had the carvers all clustered in Coney Island, mm -hmm. and then they also right. had them in Philadelphia. Right. You know, and yeah. Leavenworth, Kansas was another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, well, but now, at what, did, at, at what point did you start saving complete carousels, which were not repopulated? Well, that's a good... We started... <clears throat> Carol wanted one carousel horse. And, uh, you know, so the, the story's too long for, for here, but yeah. uh, okay. basically... Then she discovered that she wanted one of each, discovered, oh, uh, there's different carvers. Well, I better have one of each carver. And then she discovered, well, they made things other than horses, so maybe we better have one of those. And so we woke up one day and thought, oh, my God, look at the size of this collection. You know, what are we going to do with this? Uh, and, you know, at the, the, you know, 50 years ago, we didn't think we were going to die. And so, but we decided, well, we got to be thinking about that a little bit. And so then all of a sudden we woke up one day and said, hey, we have the largest collection of carousel animals in the world. Yeah, so, wow. Mm -hmm. So what we decided to do is we uh, decided to form a 501c3 museum. And this is the, the vessel that we intend to, 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 to leave this to. And then we went out and we found that there was a lot of people interested in, in preserving carousels and we formed a carousel museum m membership and a board and everything and uh, that group of people is responsible for how all of this has really happened. The, the big, big machine that I mentioned that Carol made a rotating museum, that was all done with me all in volunteers. 100% volunteers. We met like two or three times a week in the evenings after everybody's work. Pacific Power and Light, no, PGE, gave us a substation to work in. Wow. The, 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 the volunteer came on our first night and they picked out their horse. They took that horse and they took that horse completely through to the installation on the carousel they were they named their horse and it was we that was where when we had the first ride of that carousel was on when we had the national carousel association come mm. as a matter of yeah. fact mark uh pushed the button i've got pictures of that <laughs> and started this carousel. we didn't we hadn't run this carousel we didn't know for sure if it was going to run and here we have all these people from all over the nation standing there waiting for the maiden, maiden ride, and all of the volunteers got to ride their horse, and it was really, uh -huh. really kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, does the museum actually had a location at some point? Uh, we've had, <laughs> we had, we, P Pacific Power, PGE is a great big, has a big building in the down, down in, in the middle of, Portland, Oregon, and it has this huge open air lobby. And uh, I went to PGE, and I said, "Look, what you ought to do is you ought to have uh, a museum here." And they said, "Oh, that's the stupidest thing we've ever heard." And I said, "Okay, but you ought to have a carousel in this open space that they couldn't rent." And they said, "Okay, that would go for that." So they we brought in this carousel, and. I'm uh, laying underneath the carousel, 
working on it one night late, and this footsteps comes up, and I could see these shiny shoes there. And I came out, and I said, hi, and he said, who are you? And I said, I'm Dwayne. And I, and I said, who are you? And he says, my name is Short. And I said, Short, is you in any relation to the chairman of the board of PGE? And he said, yep, that's me. Whoa. And I said, oh, okay. Well, I think I tell you what, you need to put a little museum down here, uh, and right over there in that space that you can't rent, because it's been vacant for a long time. And he said, well, I think that's a pretty good idea. And I said, okay, so fine. Next morning, my phone rings from this guy that I that thought a museum was the stupidest idea he ever heard. He called. He says, hey, you know, we got to thinking. I think. <laughs> Maybe that's a good idea. I mean, I'll put a museum in here. And I said, well, that is really a brilliant change of thought. And so that was our first museum. Then they turned the, 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 the building into a, what was it called, Mark? A World, Trade, World Center. Trade Center. And A lot of those around the country yeah, lately. <laughs> they said, we don't know if it's really appropriate to have a carousel in a World Trade Center. I said, okay. They said, well, we'll give you several years to e-phase out because we don't want any bad publicity. So I picked up the phone and I called Pacific Power and Light, who's, uh, who had just bought the Lloyd Center, which was 40 acres of office building. And they, were, they wanted a people attractor for a big development. So I, so they said, would love to have you. So we moved from Pacific Power, P P Portland General Electric to Pacific Power and Light. Oh, a lot of peas in there. And <laughs> there's a lot of peas in there. And, uh, and this was wonderful. They, they gave us all this space. We had this wonderful museum. Then Pacific Power and Light sold their 40 acres to a, a New York outfit. Mm. Probably a friend of yours. Nobody, I, I don't know anybody that high up. <laughs> And then went from a, we went from a people tra a tractor overnight to a non-paying tenant. Whoa. So you know what that meant. That yeah. Meant that we had so much time to get out. So I went to Hood River, Oregon, and there was a big empty building there. And I said to the port, it was owned by the port, I said, why don't you let us occupy that building? And they said, well, we'll let you occupy it, but you got to fire fireproof it. So we had to paint a bunch of stuff on it, so they let us fireproof it. <clears throat> but it was really a crummy old building. Well, then we bought uh, a bank building, and we put the first floor of the bank building uh, into a museum. Oh, it was wonderful, and we were so successful, but we started having problems. The problem, One problem was, here's a carousel museum with no operating carousel. Yeah. Well, that's Those aren't fun. That's not fun. No. Nah. But the big problem was we were attracting big crowds, and we had at times three big buses in downtown Hood River. Well, Hood River is a little bitty town. Yeah, I know. I drove and, through it to get here. And, <laughs> and, and three uh, three buses messed up downtown. So we said, well, we got to do something. We got to do something different. And so then we were able to to acquire a 29,000 square foot clear span old mill building. It's a historic old building. It's a fabulous old building. It is 360 feet long and 80 feet wide clear span because it has these big beautiful bowstring uh, trusses. So it's perfect for setting up carousels. Well we have acquired that now and now we're starting to do all the work of we just got electrical in. That was a huge expense and a huge amount of work. And now we are getting the interior restored around to where we're going to start putting up carousels. Mm -hmm. And uh, as our centerpiece is going to be Philadelphia toboggan. Fifteen. Very good. <laughs> you passed the test. You rat. Well, well, I, I, I'm very fascinated with Philadelphia. 15, PTC 15, for a number of historical reasons, because mm -hmm. that's like New York City's long lost carousel, which yeah. nobody seems to know about! Yeah. So, what, yeah. What, what, when was it, what date was it card? Oh, yeah. About 19. Oh, 19 what? Uh, somewhere between 1908 and 1911. 
I no. Oh, okay, I'm wrong. Okay, I, I, I'm not. I'm not. You're just guessing now. Yes, I'm just guessing. Um, but I do know that Fort George Amusement Park burned down in 1911. Uh huh. Yes. So you know where it went then? So it, it went, went to it went to Dandelion Park in Muskego, Wisconsin. Then where? Then it went to Expo 86 in no, Vancouver. No, it didn't. Oh, went to somewhere in the middle. Yeah. What it was went it? to in the storage in, at Oshkosh. And it was bought by a group that was going to uh, make a big shopping center around this carousel. Well, they went broke. Uh -huh. So one day I get a call from a bank. Oh, one of your contacts from way back? Yeah. Ah. And said, we have, a, we have a carousel back here we want to sell you. So we ended up buying it from the bank. And then we brought it out here. And that's the one that we restored uh, with volunteers again. Uh huh. And it went to the World's Fair in, in Canada in... Expo 86. 1986. Okay. Yep. And uh, that, uh, that was just a fabulous experience. Yes. And then it went to Industry California. Didn't it? Yes, it went to... <laughs> yeah, I'm reminding, I'm reminding him. <laughs> it went to industry, that's, that's right, Los Angeles. City of, in the city of yeah. Industry, California, Puente Hills, Hills Mall. Uh, it was there for a long time. I wrote it there. Did you? Oh, I okay. made a music video of it for Christmas you and it aired on my show. You get around a lot. Yes, I hop around. around. These places aren't just short hops apart now, well, are then they? It, then, do you yeah. know where it went then? It went back east. Yeah, where? Came back home. Where? My neck of the woods, where was roughly. That? It went to Rockland County, West Nyack, the Palisades Center. That's Mall. right. And you know, it was we there were, for 10 years. Ah, and we just got there, and we had spent all this time and energy, and uh, we were getting there, and you know, the, the, the shopping center is so very, very concerned about publicity. Yes. And so uh, all of a sudden, this, this fact. This little fat comedian, I don't know what her name was. Um, Rose Island Bar? No. Not Rose Island. Uh, anyway. A lot of fat comedians. Well, she lived there. there. Uh, she's had a talk show. Um, O'Donnell? Rosie? Yes, Rosie. Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell came to the carousel <laughs> in disguise with oh, her kids. Wow. And we charged her a buck and a half. And so uh, that night on her show, or the day on a show she was talking about, went to my favorite shopping center in this carousel, and they charged my kids a buck and a half. <laughs> and she just whining her head off. <laughs> that and, sounds like her. <laughs> and, and so the manager calls me in. He says, we got to reduce the price. I said, I'm not going to reduce the price. And so so what I did is I went over and I bought a cup of, I bought a, uh, a Coke, a buck and a half Coke. And I sent her a letter and a receipt for this thing. I said, it cost them four cents to produce this thing. And you're whining about this 100-year-old carousel that we spent all this time and energy on. And you can't afford a buck and a half on your, uh, for your kids. I sent that off, registered letter. You think I heard back? No. Nah. Nah. Oh. Anyway, that was that story. Yeah, but the thing about that carousel, that carousel literally... Traveled back and forth across the country. That's right. And it was and it was in the New York City area twice. Yes. Yeah. In fact, I in fact uh, the folks at home are going to see this. I don't. Have, I didn't bring it with me to show you. But you see, um, recently, uh, a few months ago, in fact, I was on my way up to the Palisade Center Mall, where Carousel was. It was already gone by the time. But I was out up there on my way up there for a different reason. But I was catching the train up in the Bronx on the Harlem Line, the MTA Metro North Railroad. I was standing on the platform of the University Heights train station, and I was able to look across the river uh, over to Manhattan, and up on the top of the hill, I could see what's what is known as George Washington High School. That is that is standing on the spot of what used to be Fort George Amusement Park. Oh, really? Right. Now I understand PTC 15 was in Wendell's Park. Would you happen to know if that was actually the same place, or was it just next door, or something like that? I don't know. No, because yeah, because that's what everybody says that the um, PTC 15 was at Wendell's Park, and, and, and also it says Fort George, New York, but most people don't know that Fort George, New York is in New York City! Yeah. It's in Manhattan! Well, you know more about this than I do. Well, it's my neck of the woods. Uh, yeah. but, it's, but the thing is, it's, an amusement, it's one of those long, lost, forgotten amusement parks, and it, 
And it only lasted from like 1895 to 1911, and then they, the neighborhood burned it down. Somebody in the neighborhood burned it down. But the carousel survived the fire. And then I read on the internet somewhere that uh, some author of a book of Lost Amusement Park of the Hudson Valley said that there were actually three carousels in uh, Fort George, which means PT-15 was one of them. So Ooh. I was wondering what the other two were. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. So that carousel went back and forth across the country. It was here in the New York City area twice. So I, And uh, on top of that, as I said, I got to ride it in two different places. There's only a handful of carousels I could say I've ridden in more than one location. Huh. And that was one of them. Because I was glad, and I, I, I wasn't able to make it to Expo 86, but I was glad to be able to make it up to, make, make it to uh, California and then see it here in the New York City area for like I, I have a 10 question. years. Yes. Do they make you wear a seatbelt? Um, they didn't at, they didn't at, uh, in Palisades, they did at Puente Hills. Mm. And at Puente Hills, that's the carousel that they walked around with a dipstick to make before they ran it to make sure it was 100% level. <laughs> if not, you had to no, you had to get off and go that one. You get on that horse, you move over here, you move that. And it, it took almost 10 minutes for every ride because it took them that long to make sure it was evened out. Even though the the platform was and like what, know, a foot off the ground. Why? Yeah. Because we want that carousel to last another hundred years. Yes, that's right. Although there, were, I heard there were, there were issues with the center pole. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they didn't have, they didn't go through that trouble at Palisades. Yeah, you know. And so I was I kind of sad to hear that that carousel was leaving Palisades Mall after the, when you, you didn't renew the lease there. And um, and as I said, since then Island Carousel moved in and took over that spot. They yeah. put they put a Bert a Bert Zone double decker there. You know, and uh, so that uh, that's a huge mall, though. You know, so um, no, I'm I'm glad there's still a carousel there, but I missed 15. Yeah. But I was able to uh, I was able to um, sort of like put my friend who was behind the camera there, who flew me out here to do this interview, uh, <laughs> because he was one he had ridden the carousel in when it, uh, Expo '86, but he had lost touch with it, and mm. I was able to tell him where it was in my neck of the woods. You know. I was hoping he'd come back to New York in time before the lease expired, but unfortunately that was not that was never to be. But uh, but if you can get PTC fifteen back up here in Hood River, yes, that would be lovely. We intend to do that, and it's just kind of a function of money. But we have everything online now, and we plan to start putting it up this summer. This summer? This summer? Two thousand twelve? Two thousand? Will you come back and? July, and we'll give you a ride, and we won't make you wear a seatbelt. Oh, well, I'm not sure I can make it back here in July. <laughs> but, uh, well, any right time here. after that, within yeah. the next hundred years after that. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll How many carousels are you currently trying to find homes for? We have a big carous that big Luth in San Diego. We have mm -hmm. uh, three abreast Spillman now across the street from the big boat down there in Long Beach. Ah. Uh, Queen Mary. Um, oh, I was at the Queen Mary. It wasn't the carriage. No, it's across the water. Oh, okay. It must have gone there since yeah, I was. The, the, that was did last you see time. that big Ferris wheel? No, no. I, I haven't been. Last time I was in, I stayed at the Queen Mary was back in 2004, I oh, think. No. That was 2004. I was there. And then we have one in Santa Barbara, California. Now, see, you oh. know, Santa Barbara is really a. a, a well to do community. Yes, I know. And uh, they years ago came to us and they said, if you will bring us a authentic one of your uh, museum mint restored carousels, uh, we will build the building. And uh, as long as you promise to stay there five years, we will build the building and you can have a carousel. So we put one there and that's, you know, that's what we want. We want carousels in, park, in, in parks. Uh, and where they belong. Where they, where they belong. Because then it's more of a community thing and it's, you don't have to, you know, it, it's just a place for carousels. Mm -hmm. And we have them there and then we, uh, that's the only ones we have up now. We would love to have, find locations for three more. We have three more carousels restored. I think we've restored eight carousels. Wow. We have quite a few more to restore, but the the money has dropped off. Yeah, that's because, always the problem. Because uh, the economy. Well, not the economy, but our locations. Oh. We don't have profitable locations for them anymore because of the the, the econ economics that have changed in shopping centers. And real estate in general, actually, yeah. you know yeah. that's. 
So uh, to answer your question, how many locations were we looking for? About three. Mm. Uh, you're aware that I do write a column, a, month, a sort of monthly column for the Carousel News and Trader magazine. Uh, I found that out today. Just today, yes. I didn't know that you were so darn famous. Well, not famous. I just tried well, to pervasive. Well, I would say <laughs> famous. That's a really nice magazine. Oh, yes. To have your own column in there, that's pretty good. Yeah. Well, Roland invited me, and so oh, I gladly oh, obliged. And, you know, it's getting good for some. Now, one of the things I wrote about in that, one of my topics in that column was... Um, had to do with something you mentioned earlier about how, in, okay, in Europe, most of the uh, most of the carousels there are, are traveling carousels, whatever. They take a lot more wear and tear than ones here in this country, mm -hmm. which would tend to be more permanent. However, I wrote in my column a, a, a few months ago that permanent is really a is really a uh, relative term because even the permanent carousels travel around a lot more than. They probably were expected to. Uh, a good example is PTC 15. It went back and forth across the country twice, you know. Yeah, but it, so, didn't, it didn't do it every two weeks. No, not every two weeks, but the because fact is that it did. And for one thing, it takes two weeks just to take it apart. Yes. It mm -hmm. takes two months to put it together. Right. So you didn't just whip that thing around. Yeah, but it more had to do with the fact that even in the heyday of streetcar trolley parks, they, a lot of them didn't really last very long, which is why so many of them are forgotten nowadays, like... Um, as I said, Wendell's Park or George George Park where 15 was in New York City, that park really didn't last long right. uh, And it, when, when you think of long. And then, um, again, a lot, of, a, lot of, between, a lot of those amusement parks didn't last very long. Um, um, I mean, have you, for, for example, are you familiar with, um, you've heard of um, Kitty Land in Melrose Park, Illinois, just outside of Chicago? They had a PTC that closed down. About almost four year, about three years ago. Mm -hmm. Right now, it, uh, it was in that carousel, a Philadelphia PTC carousel, was in the Chicago area for like oh, over right, over fifty years. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I think maybe more than fifty years, maybe eighty years. Let me say. But prior to that, it turned out it was in water in a, in a park in Waterbury, Connecticut, a long not forgotten amusement park in mm -hmm. Waterbury, Connecticut, and that pavilion is still standing. It's now just houses picnic tables, but. Uh, I took a walk around there, and I could look on the ground. I could see where the center pole was, and everything. And I wrote about this in my column. So, so I'm pretty sure when that carousel went up in Connecticut, that nobody thought it wasn't only wasn't going to be there for a short period, relatively short period of time. It spent more time in um, in Chicago, mm -hmm. and then look at all the dozens of carousels that used to be in Coney Island back home, and. Uh, most of those are gone. There's going to be one carousel coming back, returning to Coney Island next year. And that carousel isn't even an original Coney Island carousel, even though it was built in Coney Island. Uh, so a lot of these permanent carousels really weren't as permanent as people think. You like to think that when something is, place is built, it'll last forever. Mm -hmm. Sadly, that's not true. Yeah, that's for sure. So the, the fact that you can keep some of the memories and artifacts of these um, carousels going somewhere, somewhere out there in the world or in the country, I think that's a great thing. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I miss Palisades Amusement Park. I was only there once in my life, but uh, Central Park is the carousel I pretty much grew up with, and uh, and the producer of my TV show actually worked there for seven years. Yeah. So anyway, carousels, um, even permanent carousels, weren't permanent in their location. They moved around so many times. Mm -hmm. All the carousels that were in Coney Island went on to other places, assuming they still exist. And you know, but uh, I'm just saying that you're right that um, carousels are. Uh, even though there are like 100 perhaps classic carousels left, it's nice to know that, that the art is not dead, that they are building them again. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe not necessarily the same as they used to do, although they're, they're, they're doing their best they can. But, uh, but uh, the thing is, nothing beats an old carousel, one that has the history and has the memories, and, uh, and you've saved a lot of those. And that, for that, I am grateful. So, do you know which way the English carousels go, right? They go clockwise. Why? Because that's the way you're supposed to properly mount a horse. So which way does the American carousels go? Counterclockwise. Why? Uh, because we drive on the right side of the road. At least that's what I always thought. <laughs> well, that's wrong. Oh? Yeah. We drove on the wrong side of the road? No. <laughs> that's not the reason. What is the reason? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Some people, okay, another, another reason I thought I heard was that it's easier to catch the brass ring because most people were right-handed. 
you knew all along, didn't you? No, that was, that's one of those things I heard. Yeah, well... You know? Well, it was the next uh, a multiple choice. It was like one of those all of the above things. You, know, you did really... You just... You put me on a little bit, aren't you? No, I really I thought it was one reason or the other. Let me play like you didn't know. You like to play like uh, me? Okay, you're going to play dumb like I was dumb. Yeah. Okay, now... <laughs> it, it, most Americans are right-handed. Yes. To reach for the brass ring, which was the popular game in those days... You, it had to be going counterclockwise for you to reach for it with your right hand. Yes. Well, now you would reach and you'd grab a ring and uh, from a little arm that was sticking yes. out. Now, if, I if did that, that yesterday in Salem. If, if that ring was a brass ring, you would turn it in for a free ride. Yes. That's where going for the brass ring came yes. from. I did that yesterday. If I it was to. a silver ring, that was a loser ring. Well, and, we wouldn't call them that. Well, but, yeah, mm. but it was called that in those days. And as you came around to the other end, there was a big clown with a big brass tongue. And you'd throw it in there and try to hit the to tongue? Ring the tur- That's the way the guy got his rings back. Oh, uh, yeah. But, you know, today, you, you, you can't do that because of the liability insurance. Yeah, I know. Uh, but the, uh, and you know how, how people got hurt <laughs> with the brass They rings? fell off! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> You're wrong again! Well, nobody's perfect! Okay, well, what <laughs> happened... Is that the people, the rings would be left on the floor and somebody would slip on the ring and break an arm on the floor. Ouch. And that's the reason we don't have brass ring games anymore. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, yes, uh, you know, merry grounds have, and carousels, however you want to call them, they have made it into the new century, new millennium. Mm-hmm. It's amazing how many carousels have actually gone past 100 in this country. Yes. I used to think a carousel built in 1848 was considered old, but now I must be carrying. I must be coming an old gray hair. Yeah. I hope you are. Oh, that is a good one. Yeah, I ain't what I used to be. <laughs> I hope you aren't an old gray hair. I'm an old gray hair. I'm aging very fast. Oh, well, well, aging. I I can, I can think of that as aging like fine wine. You only get better. Right. Yeah, just like carousels do, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Well, well. Um, uh, well, Dwayne, it's, it's really an honor and a pleasure to meet you, and um, I, I'd like to thank you. Uh, you know, I appreciate it. It's for all an the honor and say. pleasure to meet you. Oh, thank you. You're yeah, welcome. right, and uh, you know, so I hope hope you enjoyed reading my column. <laughs> so now you know, and now you know the bunny behind that column. Right. Yes. Okay. Oh, wait, well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from Hood River, Oregon, here with Dwayne Perron.